is here, ladies and gentlemen. The results are in from Judgment Day. The draw has been made. We are hours away from the start of the World Championships. To kick off this glorious time of year, I'm going to be going through the results from Judgment Day, just saying a few lines about each fixture, about what it might mean to the winner, to the loser, who they're going to be playing in the first round. The wheels are in motion for this year's World Championships. I'm not going to be making my predictions for round one or previewing it or anything like that. That's coming either tomorrow or the day after. Me and my friend Isaac are going to have a big crack about the first round. Can't wait for that. But let's crack on with this for now. We're going to start at the bottom, work our way up to the top where, you know, the fixtures that finished late last night will be. But right down at the bottom here, we have got Jack Lazowski 10, Matthew Stevens 3. So first off, Jack Lazowski set up a first round tie against Ding Junhui. That's a hell of a little glamour tie, isn't it? But more importantly, Jack had to qualify. He had to. He is 17th in the rankings. He needs to get back into that 16. Otherwise, his career is really trending in the wrong direction, considering where it was supposed to go and where it could end up. He won the last seven frames in a row against Matthew Stevens. Again, one of the best players to never win the World Championship. I said that the other day. Yes, I was paraphrasing from David Hendon, but it's still very true. I mean, to, to beat a player like that 10-3 on Judgment Day, that is seriously impressive bottle from Jack. I'm impressed. He should be buzzing. He needs to kick on from here. He Look, no one thinks Jack Lazowski is going to win the World Championship. I don't even think Jack Lazowski thinks he's got a chance of winning the World Championship. What he needs is a deep run, though. He needs a quarterfinal, maybe even a semi-final. Get solidly back into that top 16. Forget he ever had to qualify for the Crucible. Make sure he's not in that position next season. And then maybe get up back to the levels that he was looking at achieving about 18 months ago. Maybe a bit longer when he started to get to the odd final and whatnot. Moving on, Stephen Maguire, 10. Wanty Jun, 6. Look, I'm smiling because a few weeks ago I did a video on Stephen Maguire and how his career has, you know, like Jack, trended downhill. You know, Wanty Jun is a solid player, 37th in the rankings. And it's a, it's a relatively comfortable victory for Maguire. So he can rock up at the Crucible in good spirit and hoping that this is the start of some sort of resurgence a long way to go in that regard what he has set up is a tie against ali carter that's a lovely little battle that i don't i i don't know how that's going to go i'll uh like i say i'll be discussing that with isaac later today the video will be out in a couple of days um that that could be one of the hardest ones to call in the first round jack jones beat zhao wei long 10-4 is Jack Jones one of those that's going to just have a career of being good at the Crucible, being good at the World Championships? I mean, Zhao is one of the best younger players on the tour, and that's a comfortable victory for Jack Jones following up on his quarter-final run last year. Obviously, everyone who wins on Judgment Day can be delighted to get there, but for someone like Jack Jones to, to do it twice in a row, two years in a row, that shows a real bottle. That shows that maybe we haven't seen the best of him in other tournaments. He saves his best for this time of year. And you just make a habit out of that and you end up having a really good career. So, well in Jack. I hope he can replicate some of the form he showed last year at the World Championship. That'd be amazing. He has got a bastard of a tie though. He's up against Zhang Ande. I mean, that'll be a real, real grind fest that if he is to get through. <laughs> Next up, a man that has got away with murder this week. Stuart Bingham, on at least one occasion, could have dropped the hell out of the qualifiers. He was in trouble. Forgive me, I can't remember who it was against, but he was 9-7 uh, down and won the last three frames to get through to Judgment Day. He came up against Louis Heathcote on Tuesday, won 10-8. I think Bingham would have expected a comfier night than that. Louis can be happy with his performance, gutted that he's not at the Crucible for him. Louis would have been the lowest ranked player at the Crucible this year if he had got over the line against Bingham, but as it is... Bingham finds himself back at the Crucible with an opportunity to reverse his fortunes as well. This is the case for so many of the players that have qualified or indeed got to Judgment Day. It's a chance to turn their fortunes back around and get back up to a level where they used to be. The ranking points on offer at the World Championship can make or break a career, let alone a season. So, yeah, Bingham needs a deep run. He needs this not to be a flash in the pan. Let's see how Ball Run gets on. He set up a tie against Gary Wilson. 
that's that's not good news for Stewart. I don't think again we'll talk about it more in the upcoming video, but I think that's that's a that's a tough card he's been dealt there. Yu Hei Shun is through. He beat Jason Kendrick 10-7. Kendrick had a really solid run of fixtures, really. I think that's the result you would expect between those two. Kendrick can be happy with his progress through the qualifiers. He, he kicked things off against and inspired by Yu Lu. I've just had the little look there. It's actually Liu's fourth time at the Crucible. I, I wouldn't have thought he'd been there that much. Uh, that escaped my notice. Well played. Maybe this time he can get further than round two, which is his best so far. For Liu to have been to the Crucible four times already at his age, which is 26, by the way, that's pedigree. That's, that's really impressive. Best of luck to him. Do I think he'll go that far? No. No, I don't. He's up against Sean Murphy, who will be heavy, heavy favourite in that scenario. Sean's not at his best year, but I, I can't see him losing that one. So, very well qualified from Liu. If that's where it ends, so be it. You can still be happy, I reckon. This is the result, lads. This is the result. Dominic Dale, 10. He got Quan, 8. The, the Dale train keeps rolling. Dale's had a brilliant, consistent season, going deep in quite a few tournaments. And here he is, back at the Crucible. Oh, Dom. The only disappointment is we won't have him on commentary at first. Unless he does a Sean Murphy and just fucking... Hops off the table and straight into the commentary box. Can't see him doing that. I think he will knuckle down for this. I hope he does. Imagine. I just remembered that I said a few weeks ago on this channel that I will dye my hair platinum blonde if Dale wins the world championship. Hold me to that. Hold me to that. Dom will be up against Kyron Wilson. Tough. Not impossible. I feel like I barely see Kyron Wilson at the moment. Like, where, 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 where you been? Solidly in the top 16, but where have you been? Come on, Dom. Come on, Dom. Anyway, moving on. Robbie Williams, 10. Chris Wagelin, 9. Every time I've seen Robbie play this year, he has impressed me. He's had some right battles. He's had some big wins. Not gone as deep as he'd like in certain tournaments, although I feel like he had a semi-final earlier this year. Don't quote me on that. But, um, yeah, to beat Chris Wakelin in a decider on Judgment Day, huge step forward. I'm resisting all the song puns because I hate song puns. But, yeah, really good. He's up against Mark Allen, though. See you later, Robbie. That, that is uh, a good run, but I think you're going home, bud. Ricky Walden, 10. Mark Davis, 9. Oh, tricky Ricky. I really like Ricky. I think he's a great player. Uh, just a little note, Davis had a 147 attempt that got to the 12th black. That's pretty gutting, I know that feeling. Uh, so many times I've been on a 147 and missed the uh, the first or second black and it is horrible. Walden will play Tom Ford. Look, Tom's had a great season and is a great player. But I think Ricky will be happy with that draw. He'll, uh, he'll be looking for a bit more than a round one exit, I think, this year. Come on, Ricky. On to Wednesday's results which kicked off with Hossein Fafai beating Zhang Jun 10-5. Comfortable from Hoss, back at the Crucible. Starting to get comfortable there. We're starting to expect Hoss to go deep in certain competitions. Not just, you know, the ones that make up the bulk of the calendar, but also tournaments like the World Championship, the UKs and whatnot. He's 19th in the rankings, which feels like he should be higher. I think you'll want to stay out of the headlines this time around. Keep your head down. Play your best snooker. See what happens. And his best snooker will be required because he's up against Judge Trump. That's a belt in tie. That might be the best yet in terms of the first round lineups that we've touched on. Moving on, last year's Crucible surprise package, other than Luca Purcell, Cijia Wee. He beat his compatriot Wu Yiza 10 4. Now, that's a really, really ominous uh, score. Wu Yiza can play, man. I, I, I think it shows Bottle to uh, qualify again to put last year. The way it ended to bed. Look, is he going to win it? No. Will he get as far as last year? Pro probably not. But it just start making a habit of being at the Crucible and you'll get plenty of chances to go further and further and further. And you might just end up a world champion. You never know. See, shall we? Keep it up, mate. He'll be playing against Mark Williams, though. So uh, it's pretty much as tough as it gets, considering recent form. Moving on to a feel-good result here. 
David Gilbert 10, Zhao Gadong 6, no offense, Gadong, but David, man. Is this it's this time of year that you really think about David Gilbert because of that kick in the semi-final a few years ago? I think everyone roots for him. He's not had the easiest time over the last few years. He's still got a solid ranking of 31, but remember he did used to be in the top 16. Chance for a deep run. Chance to start snapping at the heels of the 16 again. I just hope whatever happens, he doesn't go out under a cloud. I hope he plays well, even if he doesn't get that far. Hope he can just show people, remind people how good a player he is. And he's up against Luca Purcell, which obviously on the face of it, it's like, oh, unlucky, you've been drawn against the champion. We'll see. We'll see. We just mentioned Mark Williams, his son, not his son, his prodigy, Jackson Page, beat Nopon Sankam 10-9. That's a high quality fixture with perhaps a surprise result. I think Sankam's a lad that we, we we should start to expect to see him at the Crucible a lot more. Jackson, this is at least his second time at the Crucible, possibly more. Apologies, I can't, I can't quite remember all the stats. And of course, he's got the tie that everyone... Does everyone want it or does everyone want to avoid it? He's got Ronnie O'Sullivan. No chances are he isn't going to get that far. But I, I talked recently, I don't think Ronnie's going to win it this year. Could Jackson make himself the big story of the tournament straight out the gate? Maybe. He doesn't play till Wednesday. He's got time to recover. I hope he plays that game with a lot of freedom rather than a lot of fear. I'm looking forward to that one. Into the last four results now, into the sort of like later finishes of last night. Pang Junju beat Chao Yupeng 10-8. I really like Chao Yupeng. I think he's had a nice little redemption arc. But Pang Junju. Solid man, solid. Never disappoints when I watch him. Even even in defeat, he's never poor. Does Pan get my juices flowing? No. Do I appreciate how solid the player is? Yes. He's been drawn against Robert Milkins. So I think this is a chance for Pang to progress because I think his game is suitable to the Crucible. Was it last year he played Ronnie in the first round? Not the tie you want, really, or is it? Blah, blah, blah. I think Milkins is a much friendly a tie but, but obviously if Milkins wins that comfortably no one will be surprised we'll we'll see that that's one where we'll see but fair play to Pang back at the crucible well done here it is boys the result no one no one thought would happen Jamie Jones 10 Neil Robertson 9 what do I say what can I say? The conclusion of a miserable season for one of the best ever. What is going on, guys? Because we can talk about it till the cows come home, and we have done all season. Always thinking that the recovery is just around the corner. Is it? Is it? I'm frustrated. I'm annoyed. Not, not a Jamie. Brilliant. Brilliant result for Jamie. Brilliant performance from Jamie. And I'm not annoyed at Neil. But I think most of us, you know, really love Neil, don't we? He's been around for so long. He's entertained us for so long. And so we've all kept the faith. But it's when that faith is always ending in disappointment. You start to feel a bit... I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Little, little note though, Robertson's 103 in the fourth frame was his 100th century at the World Championship. Well, I'm sure he's delighted. I'm sure he's going to be sleeping very soundly this week, knowing that he's got up to a century of centuries at the World Championship. It's almost a side note, J Jamie Jones will be playing John Higgins. Um, I don't think that's the worst draw he could have got. I don't think it's the best draw he could have got. Again, guys, I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm more distracted by the fact that Neil's out than Jamie got through. So I'll just leave it at congratulations, Jamie. You probably don't deserve your victory to be overshadowed by the Neil news. But I'm afraid it is. Ryan Day has beaten Scott Donaldson 10-9. Ryan Day is quite simply a player that should be at the Crucible. Deserves to be at the Crucible. He's got an underrated little career behind him. Scott Donaldson's a player that seems to 
come in fits and spurts. You never know quite what Donaldson you're going to get. With Ryan, you know you're always going to get a solid and exciting performance, which is what you want at the Crucible. I hope in years to come, Scott can start showing his face at the Crucible a bit more. But for now, that's the result I'd expect. I wouldn't expect that thing to have... Uh, I wouldn't expect that game to go to a decider. It did. They won it. And he set up a tie against Barry Hawkins. So that's rank 18th against rank 15th. Uh, Hawkins being rank 15th, day 18th. Um, so that's probably the tightest affair that we've got in the first round. Probably the hardest to call. Um, so that, that'll be a good one. I think whoever wins that one might, might get himself into the dark horse sort of conversation for the World Championship. But there's a lot of days between now and then. Finally, poor... Ha! Huh. Joe O'Connor 10. Matthew Sell 8. Nothing against Matt. I've said on this channel so many times. I love Joe. I think he's absolutely quality. But the story here, guys, who was watching it last night? There was a frame that went on for over 90 minutes, and as it reached its conclusion, the broadcast was terminated. Dave Hendon sounded exasperated on the commentary. He was like, sorry, sorry guys, we been told we have to stop showing you this the very last qualifier with a dramatic ending wasn't broadcast and this is what i don't want to get pissed off but this is what holds snooker back so bad it just fucking takes itself down these broadcasting cul-de-sacs it just fails to move the time can you imagine at the same time manchester city were playing real madrid in the champions league it went to a penalty shootout in my Imagine if they cut that off. It wouldn't because, you know, a professional bloody sport doesn't put itself in that position. Thankfully, there was a stream floating around Twitter. Credit to James's Snooker Nation for finding it. But, guys, it's just not good enough. It's not good enough for that to be happening. For the final World Championship qualifier. Anyway. Anyway. Joe O'Connor will play fellow Leicester man Mark Selby. So I do think Joe O'Connor's World Championship run will end there. In my very biased opinion, he will be at the Crucible again and again and again. And he will be a ranking event winner, if not more, in the future. So that is Judgment Day. I've got a full preview and prediction of round one coming up, hopefully before play starts, depending on how much of a big boy it is to edit. Yeah so excited it's finally here the world championships what more do i have to add we are blessed ladies and gentlemen hope you enjoy it i sure as hell will catch you very soon for a lot more world championship crack